This is my Epson XP600. This is the best inkjet printer I've ever owned, hands down, period. What makes it so great? Well, I hated Epson products um, years ago when I used to sell printers. And um, when I was, you know, when I had actually purchased a few printers. My first inkjet printer was an Epson Stylus 440. And um, subsequently I had owned about two other Epson printers and they all died the same way. They clogged. You know, they had severe clogging issues. Well, this later model X Epson printer hasn't had that issue. This is um, also not prone to the misfeeding issues that used to plague the top feeder Epson printers. Uh, they switched to a bottom feed mechanism to improve reliability. And I gotta say, they did a damn fine job. Um, printing photographs, which is what I use this printer for primarily, has been nothing but a breeze. The, um, the inks are moisture resistant, if not completely waterproof, and um, I just am very pleased with this product. But there's a product that I, I brought into this house not too long ago, a little over a year ago. I brought in a brother um, MFC 50 something 60 I think it was or 5280 or something like that. It was a current model in fact they still make this product same model and that thing died after approximately probably half a ream of paper that I may have run through it maybe a full ream but it didn't last much more than a ream of paper and um, what, what happened was it started misfeeding constantly. So I did what any responsible adult would do. Knowing that it's out of warranty, I beat the living piss out of it with a hammer. <laughs> no lie, I really did. Um, I spent the next morning um, picking up broken glass off the driveway. Um, the printer just... Uh, I was printing a very important loan application, and it would not... Wouldn't do it. Wasn't happening. It was a fifty-page a fifty-page document. I had to sign every single page and return it. They wouldn't accept it electronically. So I'm like, you son of a bitch. So I um I literally went all office space on it, and um, well, that's the end of that. So I needed another printer for my document printing. Now the Epson is a fine photo printer, it really is. It, it's, it's just stellar. But when you start printing black and white documents on them, you're really wasting a lot of ink. And that's what I want to avoid. So I just picked up a new printer. Okay, it's nothing impressive. At least I'm back to the HP LaserJet series, which I've had good luck with in the past. This is a LaserJet Pro P1606DN, as you can clearly read unless you're totally blind. Um, it is the second from the bottom of the lowest printers HP manufactures. Or maybe it's the third or fourth. I think it's, it's somewhere in the bottom tier of their printer lineup. But for $119, I didn't think I could go wrong with it. This particular model supports duplex printing. It actually has a... Um, an Ethernet port. I believe it also supports Wi-Fi. Um, it supports ePrint, which is another selling feature for me. And uh, let's see. 8,000 page per month duty cycle. Um, intelligent power management. Uh, let's see. It's made in Vietnam. Huh? I've never had a Vietnamese printer before, but this will be the first. A 250 sheet input tray. Um, it doesn't appear to support wireless, but that's okay because it plugs directly into the wire to the uh, wireless router, so no big deal. Um, all right, let's open the box. So $119. It's on sale, which tells me that it's more than likely a discontinued model. Um, Let's see. What are the system requirements on this? I'm kind of curious. It supports Windows XP. 
it says it requires 512 megs of RAM, but that's bull. Um, and that's it. And of course, uh, there's always other ways around those requirements. I could probably, if I had a Windows 98 machine, I'm sure it would work with the old LaserJet um, 4, uh, not 4000, the LaserJet 4 series driver. I'm sure it'll work. Not that I'll ever be doing that, but anyway, let's see what we got here. Got a paper tray cover. Now I need your I need your opinion on this, guys. I mean, these are the logos that you find on every plastic cover for anything made these days, and they've got these comical drawings. I mean, honest to God, this one looks to me like a snowmobile. If you add tracks to that, here, let's do just that. So if you add tracks, okay. Now I only have a red mark. Right? I couldn't find my black one. Not tracks, but um, skis. And then you add, like, handlebar grips on the side of the head. It really does look somewhat like a snowmobile. Um, just thought I'd point Where were we? Alright, so I'm going to take this. I priced out the toner for this printer, and I can get a twin pack of toner for a buck forty-four, one for eighty dollars. And that toner is stated to have a, um, an expected yield of around 2,100 pages. So that's not terrible. It's a, I think it's the HP 78A cartridge that it uses. And that's if I were to use genuine HP toner. And considering the amount of printing I don't do, I think I might just pick one of those up just for the hell of it. But I should point out that the first brand new laser printer that I ever bought um... Back in 2005, is still running to this very day on its original cartridge. I actually no, I take that back. I think the current owner, who I gave it to, um, has in fact replaced the cartridge. But he built his company for it. <laughs> this is kind of funny because it just is. I find that humorous. All right, I'm gonna support this with my feet. Pull it out of the box. But the printer still works. The HP LaserJet 1022. Put this here. I spent the past week or so deploying brand new HP LaserJet M602. I went out and I bought I bought about 20 of them. And I've been spending the past week deploying them. See, as part of my job, I purchase equipment. And as a double-edged sword, anything I buy course I have to set it up. <laughs> so I am no stranger to unpacking HP products lately. It's been kind of a thing. I'm doing a lot of it lately. And I figured why not treat myself to a nice laser jet. So anyway, all I use these printers for at home is to print off um, you know like instruction booklets for certain things, um, spec sheets, uh, receipts, tax. Uh, whenever I do my taxes, I print out a hard copy and file them. It's kind of redundant since I do it electronically, but, you know, I'm old-fashioned. Look at the size of this cartridge, man. That is tiny, man. I doubt that'll last a full, you know, 2,000 pages. It's probably only a starter they generally are, but nevertheless, there you have it. 
I will never, ever, ever buy another Brother product again. The only reason I had the Brother printer is because it was part of a deal that I worked out with a real estate agent. I did some work for her, set up her brand new office, cabled the building, or cabled her section of the office, patch panel, wall jacks, the whole nine yards, set up a wireless network, and I charged her nothing. I almost charged her nothing for it, so we ended up, she just bought me the printer instead and called it a deal. That's for the uh, duplexer. That opens up. This is the um, Ethernet and USB jack. Let me get some more light here. Oh, that didn't help. But anyway. Actually, a nice looking product until you start outfitting it with all of the attachments. Um, <laughs> makes it all cluttered. But this printer is kind of an offshoot of the the, um, the 1020 series. It, well, it's a 1022 and the 1020, which were current models as of 0506. And this is kind of like an extension of that engine. It looks just like that model on the inside. Um, probably built a little bit differently. But very similar mo uh, machine internally. And it's kind of like a, a, an upgrade, or not an upgrade, but a modernization of that printer engine. These little compact HPs, they, they really do quite well. I mean, they're not bad products. They're not the greatest, but they're not bad. There it sits. Next to its Epson brother. So HP inkjets, from my experience as of late, are just nasty little devils. Um, HP lasers are still king. I, I don't know. Um, these compact ones are more throwaway products than their bigger brothers, but um, mainly because you can't buy service kits for them. So, you know, realistically, in my environment, I'll probably get 10 years out of it before I ever have to do anything to it. I don't print a lot, so that's why. But if you were to buy one um, for an office setting, I'd say don't. <laughs> At least... Don't buy the lower end models. Buy the big ones. Buy the um, the M600 series. That's a decent product. It's an enterprise level printer with a monthly volume of around, I think they're about a hundred thousand pages. And um, let's get this thing out of the way. All right. Don't lose this. But um, the only reason I got rid of the 1022 I had was because it wasn't networkable. In order to use it on my network, I had to share it from another machine. And I just don't like doing that. Kind of a pain in Because that other computer has to be running, and, well, yeah, I didn't really want to do that. Put that in. So yeah, no more brothers in this house. Uh-uh. Not gonna happen. Never again. I say. And now we come to the point where we actually test out the printer. Now, I've already gone through the trouble of installing the driver, which, I hate to admit this, required me to rebuild my entire system. Um, while installing the driver, I discovered that all of my printer drivers were corrupt because some of them were dating back to 2008. Um, and they were upgraded and upgraded and upgraded as I migrated from one Mac to the other. This is my third Mac from this very same time machine. Uh, we'll call it a rolling backup. And um, I had a nasty habit of importing my old drivers and settings and applications and it's just turned into a nightmare. So I, I've had other system issues related to uh, slowness and corrupt data on the drive. I just had to hell with it, and I rebuilt my machine from scratch. Downloaded the, um, the latest system. 
uh, <coughs> files our latest operating system from Apple and uh, then upgraded it to 10.9 and did it all over the internet and everything is running great now. I, uh, I'm very pleased. My machine is probably double the speed it was before and everything is wonderful. But that's not what this video is about, right? So it's been about three, four days maybe since I uh, bought and installed that printer. I've already done the static IP address on the router. That took all of two minutes. And um, I've got this thing uh, loaded up with paper and already turned on. One thing you should know is this printer also features HP's Instant On technology. Now, I haven't printed anything today yet, and actually it's been a few days since I've used it. So I want to show you just how Instant On, Instant On really is. Now, we're printing over the network wirelessly. The printer is hardwired to the router because it doesn't support Wi-Fi. This is not the Wi-Fi model. So as long as you have a an Ethernet port, and I have one on this router, piece of junk, got to get a new one. Um, you know... So, we're going to print out a duplexed college paper that I wrote a few months ago. Um, yes, contrary to popular belief, I am somewhat college educated. Hard to believe, I know. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go into paper handling, and we're going, I'm sorry, layout, and we're going to change it to a two-sided printing job with long edge binding. Okay, here we go. Print. Just like that. There we go. Just like that. Um, did a great job, and it was quick. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that that was from a couple. I had a couple of other things I printed a few days ago, but anyway. <laughs> One other thing I want to point out is, in well, in conclusion, is that this printer is the ideal workhorse for the home or small office. Um, if you just need utility black and white printing for handouts, notices, uh, flyers, whatever, this is the way to go. Um, you can't beat laser. I don't care what the inkjet enthusiasts say, laser is the way to go. Um, one thing about laser printed documents is that they're just so cheap to run. One cartridge is good for about 2,700 pages and costs about 80 bucks. That's freaking cheap. Um, and you can still buy the aftermarket cartridges as we do at work. I didn't realize this until after I bought this one, but I had already purchased one for work. Um, I had to buy a printer for one of the accountants to print out checks by her desk. We're talking occasional checks here, not like payroll or anything. And I went with this printer because it was the least expensive laser printer that could be hardwired. At the time, our wireless was dodgy, and um, it's been a few, probably about, about a year and a half since I bought the printer. It has a page count of about 7,000, and it still sounds just like this one does. Very smooth, very quiet, and very quick. No print quality issues. Um, there were issues a while back, and that was because one of the replacement cartridges she bought um, was leaking. And it was an aftermarket cartridge, not a genuine HP. After that, I told her, you know, you probably want to stick with the genuine cartridges because you go through so few of them, it only makes sense. Um, you know. But nevertheless, it is a terrific printer. She's very happy with it. And, um, and I'm happy with this one. I do very little printing. Um, <clears throat> you know, I only use my inkjet for photo printing because the ink is just so damn expensive. And by the way, this Epson, as I mentioned earlier, is a terrific photo printer. And I'm going to advocate that anyone looking for a photo printer stick with Epson. Uh, they have better ink technology. They have better heads than HP. Um, their products are just as, if not more, reliable than HP is now. And I say that because Epson finally ditched the 
uh, rear sheet feeder assemblies, which were very unreliable. Uh, their separation pads would load up with dust if not used frequently, and they would um, lose their their traction ability uh, very quickly. Um, I used to advocate for HP inkjets because they were bottom feed and their print heads were integrated into the cartridges, which means that new cartridges equals new print heads, which to me is a better way to go. But since HP has ditched that model, they don't have that advantage over Epson anymore. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm kind of, um, I'm moving towards Epson now. And after owning an HP uh, photo printer for quite some time, I was very unhappy with it. Um, it just, it kept eating cartridges like crazy. So back to the HP laser printers. This printer is probably manufactured by Kyocera Mita, or Mita, and, um, and it was made in Vietnam. I actually looked up printer manufacturers in Vietnam, and it came up with two, uh, Canon and Kyocera Mita. But I remember hearing from my HP representative when I used to sell HP printers that the uh, compact lasers were made by Kyocera. So I'm pretty sure that's who manufactures this one under contract. But HP is pretty tight-lipped about who their manufacturers really are. As for Brother, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, they're the new Lexmark. Um, I've had terrible luck with Brother printers, both at home, I mean, the last, one I, the last and only one I bought, and at work. Um, we had someone, one of the department heads, bought her own printer. Uh, she bought actually two of them in succession. Uh, both of them were brothers, and they both died pretty quickly. Um, and in my case, mine just stopped feeding paper. It, it kept jamming, you know, <laughs> just randomly. And um, it only had maybe a couple hundred pages on it. And, you know, I was, I, I was very unhappy with that particular machine. So, in conclusion, um, you know, printer technology changes with the wind. You know, manufacturers get a one-up on another manufacturer pretty quickly. Uh, Lexmark finally gave up and said, you know what, we're done. Uh, they stopped making inkjets because they sucked at it. Now they make lasers exclusively. And there's another one. Uh, we had a, a another um, a department head who bought her own printer. She bought a fairly, a fairly new, a brand new, uh, Lexmark color laser. That printer lasted six months, and. Uh, no, it was more than that. It lasted a year because it was out of warranty when it finally died. And um, I'm like, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for it. I can't buy parts. It can't be fixed. I mean, it's not worth it. And uh, I think what happened was um, I think the, the control board had failed, or the, basically the logic board, and I, and I couldn't fix it for her because I couldn't get another board at a reasonable cost, so we scrapped it. But um, for, for just around-the-clock laser printing, HP, in my book, is still the best. Their quality isn't what it used to be, but they're still decent products. For Inkjet, I'm going to say go with Epson. Um, avoid Brother, avoid Lexmark, based on my experiences. Of course, other people may have contradictory evidence, but... As far as I'm concerned, it's 11 o'clock, and I'm done with this video.